Uh, good morning, AP Language. <clears throat> I am home uh, with my sick daughter, and uh, it works out okay because it's Workshop Wednesday. But I do want to make sure that you guys know uh, what I expect of you in this comparison activity. Um, so this uh, PowerPoint, this slideshow here will be linked in the blog as well. So you can kind of go through it and I've linked to some things. Um, what I want you to do is find a group of three or four. Hopefully you've had a chance to figure that out. Um, there are a couple people absent that day. So make sure that everybody has a group. Do work in a group of three or four. Don't make a group of five. And um, also I would prefer you not work in partners. There's enough work here uh, to merit working with more people. Um, but you can pick your groups, move and uh, sit with them. Start by discussing each of the two texts. We talked some about Pale Blue Dot in class. We haven't talked a lot about This Is Water, but hopefully you guys have done your annotations on that. Um, use this stuff that we've talked about. Really, this is an activity in applying the things we've learned. So use the uh, framework where you took notes. Uh, use my oops. Use my notes uh, that I talked you guys through the other day. These are all different ways of saying the thing, same things. And think about these questions too, because really these uh, headings um, and the questions that are involved them. If you answer them well, you're you're addressing the questions uh, that have to do with the framework. Uh, so work through them, make notes as you read, um, identify at least two similarities. Uh, what do they have in common? Uh, what is their, their, their similar purpose? Um, and of course, there's a lot of differences in the way that they approach that purpose. And that's kind of the point of the activity. And then uh, I want you to create a Venn diagram. I think I would prefer that you do it on a piece of paper, big piece of chart paper. And that way we don't have to have computers out in front of us when we're uh, discussing this. We're not going to do a real formal presentation on Thursday, but we are going to use these and uh, you'll, you'll each have some responsibilities as far as what you can talk about. So um, make a Venn, Venn diagram or another visual model if you wanted to set it up um, more like my comparison and contrast chart or something like that. You can do it. Uh, make it pretty, uh, but don't spend a whole lot of time making something uh, really super beautiful. The, um, the beauty in this should be in your thinking. Um, Identify similarities and differences. Make sure that you have these things, uh, specific references to the text, right? That you're not just saying, making broad claims about uh, meaning, but you're pointing to the text. Um, that way, I mean, on your, on your poster, you might uh, use quotes or you might use summaries or you might like put a paragraph number so that you can make reference to it back, uh, back to it when we're discussing it. But make sure that those pointing, uh, those text pointers are in your, um, in on your poster. Uh, terminology from the notes, and I put at least six of our rhetorical concepts. That means use some of these words here in your uh, visual, and really, to some extent, these words or something like them ought to be your points of comparison. The reason we did this compare and contrast activity before we did this Venn diagram is so you could think about the fact that when you're putting these two texts in conversation with one another, you should be thinking about what the points of comparison are. And you can consider uh, both these titles here in the reading journal, uh, or you can consider some of these, uh, you know, you could talk uh, specifically about the diction of the two uh, pieces, for example. Um, but make sure that you're using those terms and you're correctly applying them. And this said some attempt to connect the dots. Don't just point to diction. Um, don't just name rhetorical devices. Certainly don't say both use logos. That goes without saying. Uh, consider how they're constructing it, right? If they are using uh, diction in different ways to create different tones, um, then, uh, then you can talk about that, right? They both are using the same techniques, but to different ends and in different ways. And that's really what I mean by connecting the dots. And then add a picture too. Uh, you know, this is a visual argument that you're making, so pictures are nice. Um, that's good. Like I said, I would prefer you do this on a poster uh, so that we can hang it on the wall and everybody can see it while we talk. And then uh, as you're completing this, and I'll give you a few minutes in class on Thursday to get this together, but as you're completing this, um, like I said, we're not going to do a really formal presentation, uh, but I will we'll kind of move through the reading journal together. And if you can have one person in your group responsible for that and of course other people in the group can can contribute as well but make one person be a, an expert in each of the areas uh, purpose and audience method and structure language and then appeals and this just said if you're only working with three people leave the appeals off that's the logos ethos and pathos which 
I know you guys really like and students really sort of gravitate to those. But really, if we're talking about these other things, if we talk about purpose and audience and language, we're probably going to talk about some of that appeals stuff as well. So if you have to skip one, skip appeals. Um, and then everybody be ready to talk about meaning. And that's sort of the fun part, right? Like, what do we take from this? Um, what what uh, what can we take away from this? How should we think about the world differently after reading these texts? And we'll talk, we'll talk about that on Thursday. Thursday will be a sort of uh, discussion day for these texts. Here's a set of criteria to make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Once again, these are sort of minimum requirements. Um, and uh, I wonder why it thinks that this word is misspelled. Um, those are sort of minimum requirements. Make sure you have those things. But really, these things are minimum requirements so that you can uh, be sure that you uh, are ready to talk intelligently about the texts. Um, so that's good. This is just a reminder of your homework. Um, hopefully your sentence is uh, uploaded. If not, you need to do that today. Uh, finish everything as an argument, chapter seven by tomorrow, and order your books. Um, please be good for the sub. I know you will, and I'm sorry to miss uh, class, uh, but I will see you tomorrow. Bye.